Hello, welcome. This short video, let us look at an example illustrating the valuation of an inverse Z transform using the residue method. That is using the mm, formula based on the complex contour integration. So we are going to look at an example on inverse Z transform using the residue method. So for instance, in this video, we are going to look at the following X of Z that is given this Z transform X of Z equal to 1 by 1 minus A Z inverse which has an ROC mod Z greater than mod A that is a region outside the circle of radius A is the ROC. So for this Z transform we have to find the corresponding uh, signal X of N signal X of N using the residue method that is using the uh, formula based on the Cauchy's integral theorem. Now let us look at the solution. We start with the definition of the inverse Z transform that is X of N is equal to 1 by 2 pi J integral closed contour integration or the contour C Z power N minus 1 and then we have X of Z that is 1 by 1 minus A Z inverse D Z. So that is the definition of inverse Z transform. Now this can be rewritten as X of N is equal to 1 by 2 pi J integral z power n that is we send 1 z power minus 1 uh, that is we send z power minus 1 to the denominator so it becomes z into 1 minus a z inverse so it is z minus a dz now this becomes a rational polynomial in terms of positive powers of z so when we compare that is x of z into z power n minus 1 uh, and then is equal to a rational polynomial f of z by g of z it will be equal to z power n by z minus a. So let us keep this definition in mind. Now consider the case 1 where the value of n is non-negative that is n is greater than or equal to 0. So in this case we can clearly see that z equal to a is the pole that is the root of g of z and the numerator z power n has no poles inside the contour c that is we can clearly see that z power n is going to be infinity only at z equal to infinity so z does not have a z power n does not have any poles or z power n do not have any poles uh, inside the contour c no poles inside therefore based on the residue formula x of n is going to be equal to z minus a that is the only pole uh, that is uh, that we have inside C. So Z minus A multiplied by X of Z Z power N minus 1 and we evaluate this function at Z equal to A. So based on our initial result that is equation 1 uh, Z X of Z into Z power N minus 1 is equal to Z power N by Z minus A. So we have Z minus A multiplied by Z power N by Z minus A and the function has to be evaluated at z equal to a. So this value clearly becomes z power n and at z equal to a we have a power n. This is the value of x of n for non-negative values or n greater than or equal to 0. So that is for whole numbers x of n is a power n. Now let us look at the second case where n is negative. Case 2 n is less than 0. In this case the function x of z into z power n minus 1 is equal to 1 by z power minus n z minus a. That means g of z becomes z power minus n z minus a and f of z is 1. So it has poles both at z equal to 0. That is it has n poles at z equal to 0. Because at z equal to 0 we have uh, zeros in the denominator which basically means that z equal to 0 is a pole. So we have n z equal we have n poles at we have n poles at z equal to 0 that is n poles at origin which are inside the contour C and then z equal to A that is the pole at z equal to A is also inside the contour C. Therefore we have, we have to consider both of them that is we have to consider the formula where we have multiple uh, poles and one pole at z equal to a multiple poles at z equal to 0 and a single pole at z equal to a so for 
for example we can evaluate the inverse z transform at n equal to say minus 1 so in that case x of minus 1 will be equal to that is n is equal to minus 1 so the function becomes 1 by z into z minus a so in this case x of minus 1 will be z that is z minus 0 z z minus 0 is z so z into 1 by z into z minus a and this has to be evaluated z equal to 0 and for the second pole we have z minus a into 1 by z into z minus a and this one has to be evaluated at z equal to a so clearly the first value is minus 1 by a because that's uh, that's in the numerator z in the numerator uh, cancels with cancels with the z in denominator so we have 1 by z minus a and z equal to z at z equal to 0 it becomes minus 1 by a and similarly the second term at z equal to a it becomes 1 by a so the total value is still 0 so for x of minus 1 we have 0 that is the inverse z transform is 0 at n equal to minus 1 now let us look at n is equal to minus 2 so in this case the function becomes that is x of z into z power n minus 1 that is minus 3 it becomes 1 by z squared z minus a so that is the function that is the ratio or the rational polynomial in this case so since we have in this case we have multiple poles that is z square at uh, that is multiple poles at origin that is because of the z square in the denominator we have to use the following formula for the inverse z transform that is for the uh, residue method we have to consider the following formula that is 1 by 2 pi j closed contour integration over c f of z by z minus a power k that is we have multiple poles k number of poles at a dz this should be equal to 1 by k minus 1 factorial that is 1 by k minus 1 factorial multiplied by k minus 1 the derivative that is d k minus 1 by dz power k minus 1 f of z so this formula is uh, valid when the pole a is inside c and the function or this integral will be equal to 0 when a is not in c that is when a does not belong to c the value of this integral will be 0 integral is 0 and when a is inside c that is when the, this pole is inside the contour c then the value is given by this derivative and of course this derivative has to be evaluated at z equal to a now we're using this formula now using this formula we can evaluate x of minus 2 that is the f uh, for the pole set origin we have the first term becomes d by dz of z square multiplied by 1 by z square into z minus a and this derivative has to be evaluated at z equal to 0 plus z minus a multiplied by 1 by z square into z minus a and this one has to be evaluated at z equal to a so the first term becomes minus 1 by z minus a whole square and z equal at z equal to 0 and second term becomes plus 1 by z square at z equal to a so the first one is minus 1 by a square and second one is plus 1 by a square so which again sums up to 0 therefore and we can repeat the same procedure for all the rest of the negative values therefore x of n is equal to 0 for n less than 0 so in total x of n is a power n u of n that is it is non-zero and a equal to a power n for n greater than or equal to 0 and it is equal to 0 for n less than 0 so that is the final uh, sequence x of n from which we have got this x of z so to summarize we have looked at an example an example in which we illustrated the evaluation of an inverse z transform from a given x of z using the residue method that is we use the uh, definition of the inverse z transform based on the Cauchy's integral theorem so we start with the definition of the uh, inverse z transform that is x of n is 1 by 2 pi j closed contour integration over c z power n minus 1 upon 1 minus az inverse dz so uh, we rewrite this one such that we have positive powers of z in both numerator and denominator and then we identify we identify that x of z into z power n minus 1 is indeed equal to z power n by z minus a therefore 
uh, for uh, in case one where we have n is greater than or equal to zero, uh, we have only one pole inside the contour C and uh, other poles are outside this contour. So x of n has only uh, one pole formula that is a formula based on only one residue. So we have x of n is equal to z minus a into x of z, uh, z power n minus one and this function has to be evaluated at z equal to a which is found to be a power n that is for n greater than or equal to zero x of n is a power n and for negative values uh, x of z into z power n minus one is one by z power minus n into z minus a so it has uh, n poles at origin which are basically inside the c that is contour c and one pole a at a which is also inside contour c so uh, we evaluate this uh, inverse z transform say, you know, starting with n equal to minus one so uh, for n equal to minus one we found that x of minus one is indeed equal to zero uh, based on the residue method and similarly we also found that at x n equal to minus two at n equal to minus two uh, based on the derivative based uh, based on the derivative formula uh, it is equal to uh, again zero so x of my x of n for negative values of n is always going to be zero therefore x of n is uh, a power n into u of n. Thanks for watching.